is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, there we are, Ira Messi. Crazy. Just Amazing. crazy that the world's greatest soccer player, at least at one point, is going to play next to the executive airport by the Wendy's on a dirt parking lot field in a temporary stadium. Big O, if they don't move a ton of those games to Hard Rock, I would be shocked. They can't, bro. The Canes. They both play on Saturday, doggy. Yeah, you know what? There's other days of the week. There's ways to make it work. They need the you Wednesday need a, games. The Wednesday yeah, games. You need a show place for a showman. And Big O, you know what it's like when they have those marquee soccer games at Hard Rock. They oh sell out. It's a great atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. And he'll sell out. He'll sell out Hard Rock. Yes. Guaranteed he'll sell out. People will come from countries. They'll fly in. Seriously, They'll make yeah. it over like what we're going to, like what we all do with Vegas. And eventually when they get a, a basketball team and you're a Heat fan, you're going to go out for a weekend and go catch a Heat game and you know, hang out in Vegas, Dolphins, whatever. It's, it's yeah, it's because it, we're we're a destination place. So, yeah, I'm with you. But uh, the, the sad part is that they're going to be in that, that during his deal, they're going to be at that stadium. So they're, they're probably well, going to come saying. up with I, th I think they're going to find alternate venues. I think they're going to try to maximize it. I think that's why certain ticket sales were stopped for the second half of the season. Obviously, they're in a tough spot in the standings. I just hope he doesn't come in like our friend Igayin, you know, and smoke a pack of Marlboros and go out of walking. Oh, yeah, no, he's that, that's not the, that's not him. Right, because, I mean, remember, it's like you see that certain players are coming. Look, let's be honest. I believe the last world ratings that Major League Soccer was like the 20th league in the world. It was behind the English England's second division, what they call the championship. So it's, it's a completely different level of competition if you arrive with the wrong mindset. And we've seen this with the LA Galaxy and other teams who are in, in, in bringing stars from Mexico and Chicharito. other places. Chicharito you struggled. I don't know what you're it, talking about. Yeah. Yeah. If you walk through it, it's embarrassing. The Igayin thing for about a season and a half, you know, where it's clear he's just going to walk around, the, you know, get a couple of PKs and call it a season. I hope it's more than that. But but still, it's a hell of a story that it's happening here. Absolutely. Crazy. Biggest star in the world, man. It's going to dwarf everything. Um, Tell, Jimmy Butler is putting together one of the great stretches, and it's not because physically it's one, you know, we, we, we've seen the other Jimmy Bucket score all kinds. But clearly, Ira, he's, he's hurting somewhere because I've never seen him in the last two games get to the hole and pass and not go up for, for a basket. But for him to fight through whatever he's got, and and work the offense and get everybody else involved. Uh, he let me tell you something. He might be the most selfless athlete I have ever seen in South Florida sports. Uh, he's had that attitude since he got here about getting everybody involved. And that attitude is helping him right now where clearly he's not himself right now. Well, and it's like I've written. You can say what you want about Jimmy. He's a teammate or not. He tends to be off on his own. He does his own thing. But he, to me, is maybe the greatest Heat game mate ever. Yeah, when the, that clock starts, what he does for his other players, and i got to tell you, Big O, I haven't had a chance to talk to you since. When I voted for MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals, and I got a lot of feedback on that because people thought Caleb Martin was more impactful. Yes. But to I, me, I, Jimmy, okay, but to me, Jimmy Butler made Caleb Martin more impactful. And Caleb Martin, so many of his big plays came off of Jimmy getting off the ball after drawing the attention by simply being Jimmy Butler. And that, to me, is the difference. And you might say, hey, Ira, Jimmy Butler's only scored 34 points in two games in these finals. But in game two, he scored 21 and took the defensive assignment against Jamal Murray. There's not a lot of two-way stars like that who are going to take something that grueling. Same thing, basically, Bam has done against Jokic. And that's the thing. When you're a two-way player, it's not just the statistics and the shots. It's the overall two-way contribution. Right. And the one thing we know about the Miami Heat, they're not going to outscore you. They have to do with a balance of offense and defense when they're at their best. Jimmy's an example of that. Bam's an example of that. You talk about how Bam doesn't have that much of an offensive dog on him, but he, in him, but he has the other side. Defense is relentless, and it's being noticed now. You might talk about how Jimmy. Uh, although, uh, wait a minute, but let's give Bam. I'll give him a little love here. <laughs> They've given him space here, and he's taking advantage of it. And he is aggressive offensively right now. So I will give him a little love here that he has been. All you know, 
he still ain't a star. He's still a super role player in my he's eyes. Doing but, what's needed. But he's and doing but, but what's he, needed. But he, yeah, he's taking and it. And Jimmy with is love. doing and same thing. And Jimmy is doing what's needed and take it as needed. He had nine assists last game. You know, everyone's talking about Joker. Oh, Joker has to be more of a passer, has to get everyone involved. There's not a time I remember with Jimmy Butler when he didn't get everyone involved. Yes, he had that 56-point game against the Bucs in game four when it was clear he had to be the guy. But the reason that Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson are doing what they're doing is because there's a star here who's willing to get off the ball. Not a post-pivot center like Bam and Joker who play as a fulcrum, but a guy who could just as easily score on his own but understand what it means to get teammates involved. So I would not minimize, even with his statistics, what Jimmy Butler has done, these playoffs, and this series so far. Um, Why... Do you guys not ask him what 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 injury he's dealing with because he's not going to answer it or what's the deal? Because I don't think it's an injury. nobody I really has asked him directly. Hey, Jimmy, you you clearly are not yourself talk, right you know, now. He talked about it before the start of the finals that he I, had I a bum ankle that. and he's pushing through. Look, for him to say he had a bum ankle is is sort of a breakthrough because Big O he missed Game Two against New York. Didn't talk about the ankle the rest of that series. Never mentioned the ankle against Boston. You know, and then comes in before the finals and at least mentions it. But I think it's also a case of that he has a lot going on. I I think it's a matter of that he's also trying to get so many other players involved. Jimmy does it differently. This won't be the Michael Jordan finals. This won't be the Steph Curry draining the shots. This will be Jimmy getting others involved, keeping himself involved. That's why I thought he was best player in the Eastern Conference finals. And that's why I probably will vote for him over even Bam if they win this series, because I still think two ways he's done more than anyone in this series to this point. And let me tell you something. I uh, I got a little I, I got a little happy when I found out because I was concerned. I thought Caleb's struggles in the first two games were eh, maybe his head got a little too big from having all that success in the Eastern Conference, doing all the interviews and all that stuff. And then I found out that he was ill. And so that's actually I'm I'm not happy that he was ill, but I'm really happy that that's really what was kind of affecting his game. Oh, yeah. What do we know about where Caleb is at illness wise? And has he turned the corner there? Yeah, because a, a lot think more. About he this. was. Think I'm about honest. this. You're one and one yeah. without Caleb being Caleb. Yes. That's without him being the awesome. best. And I think honestly, Eric Spolster didn't say this, but I think when he moved. Kevin Love into the starting lineup. It was a way of reducing the minutes on Caleb Martin. Caleb only played six minutes in the first half on Sunday. So he gave him a little bit of a break. Caleb was awful in the pregame. You know, I don't like to give up too much. I don't want to set him up to the opponents to let him know. But he was hacking. You know, he was coughing. He was sniffling. He was congested. It was not good. It was in a lot of other lines of work. Or honestly, Big O, other times of the season, either he wouldn't have played or they would have told him, get the hell out of the locker room. We don't need you here right, right now. Yeah, right. So he was very much under the weather. Yesterday, he did his media session in a hoodie with the hoodie on and the long sleeves on. Clearly still had a bit of the chill, so he's pushing through it, but he is pushing through it. And when push came to shove at the end of that game and they needed that corner three, yeah, he yeah. was there to deliver. He is a yeah. big moment player. You know what I'll say? I'll say this about, about Caleb Martin, because I think now he's growing in us and we're seeing it. Caleb Martin is not afraid. Not oh, no. afraid of the finals, yeah. not afraid of the big moment, not afraid of the Celtics, not afraid of the Nuggets. He's a tough SOB who a year from now is going to get paid. Yeah, yeah, and he should get paid. I mean, he's the uh, he's the one guy that I look at and I say, yeah, you got to uh you got to you got to um, keep that guy long term cuz he might he might be the guy that turns into another star. Uh, next to Jimmy. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you, um, man, what was, uh, what was it? Oh, yes, Tyler. So the Tyler stuff with, that people talked about, Shams reported that he was going to play in game three. Obviously, he's not playing in game three. He's having his share of setbacks. Kind of play a, a little Oliver Stone here sure. for you. If you're the Miami Heat, you got to the Eastern Conference Finals without him last year. Correct. You were a shot away from getting to the finals. You're one and one, really... If Caleb uh, comes back to being Caleb, you're going to be fine. You really don't need him. Do you need to force a guy that you then have to force into a lineup who then is also often injured and you might re-injure him again where then he spends the entire offseason rehabbing, which could hurt a trade value? 
And if you really look at it this offseason, you could probably trade a Duncan and trade a Tyler and get a Dane Lillard in return or something like that. If you're the Miami Heat, are you really pushing hard to get Tyler back? Or is it almost better to get him healthy so maybe you can trade him in the offseason for a star? Well, but he, here's the bigger point, Big O. So I'm going to go through this with you, okay? If okay. Tyler plays, someone doesn't play, correct? Or takes someone's minutes. Exactly, minute. yes. Okay. Are you going to play That's Tyler? you got to force. Are you going to play Tyler over Max Struess now? No. Okay, no. let me just continue. Are you going to play Tyler over Caleb Martin? Are you going to play Tyler over Gabe Vincent? Are you going to play Tyler over Duncan Robinson, Mr. 10 points in the fourth quarter? Are you going to play Tyler over Kyle Lowry, who's come up with some big shots in the series? Different position, too, point guard. No, 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 I can't. can't. So that's what I'm saying is there's a yin and yang of this. This is is what I would do. If Tyler passes his test that he can take contact on the hand without further injury, I'd put him in uniform. No harm there. You don't have to have more than anyone inactive in the playoffs. Everyone's active. The two-way guys aren't. You know what? Someone gets hurt. Someone gets in foul trouble. Emergency. Someone gets ill. An emergency. Break open. Or you know what, Big O? You're down 20 at the start of the third quarter and none of your guys are hitting shots and you need to get some buckets. So take off the bucket hat and go get some buckets. I'd have him ready. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play. And yeah, it's a, it's going to be such an interesting offseason with Tyler because of this. If you can split Tyler's money between Max Struess and Gabe Vincent, I know this is I know NBA is a league about stars, but if you could pay both Gabe and Max or carry Tyler's salary because of the luxury tax and the second level now we know is even more onerous and you actually wind up in trouble, that's going to be a decision for the Heat to make. If Damian Lillard really wants to get moved, and my God, he's playing all the games right now, yes. Tyler is going, to, is going to be the asset piece there. If Bradley Beal, who has a no-trade clause, so he dictates <laughs> where he wants to go. I know we've had this discussion. What I'm saying is Tyler's future is really murky. Let me ask you this, Big O, and then I'll do it also. What percentage chance – I remember we did this three years ago. What percentage chance do you think Tyler Hero is back with the Miami Heat next season? Zero. 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 All right. You know, zero uh, folks. I don't know if his email is somewhere down here, but I know you have his Twitter. You can go right to him. I would say there's a 25 percent chance he won't. I I still think as much as you think that it's hard to make deals. Remember, You're you're, you're talking to the guy that told you Flo was getting fired during a winning streak. So, you know. If I, when I got conviction, I got conviction. I and there, it's there, FTX, right? but we'll and, and I, I know, but seriously, I think the heat know that, uh, just in case they do fall short in this one, um, then they know that they're going to have to get a star and Tyler it's time now. Well, Tyler and, Dun- and Duncan has done a marvelous yeah. job of rebuilding his, his value now. Cause God, I'm so proud of him, how he puts it on the floor, how he drives to the hoop, how he sets I'll others up. I mean, he has really worked his ass off, dude. Right. And Bingo, the other part, just a shooter. The other part That's of it is this. And awesome. if they win without Tyler, they didn't need right. Tyler. So you right. got you got both sides there. So right. look, Boy Wonders in a tough spot. The reason they did the deal when they did is he's now trade eligible starting in July after the end of the season. You got a nice thirty dollar thirty dollar, I wish, thirty million dollar really? chunk to throw in there. You put him and Kyle Lowry in a deal. You get any player in the NBA at any salary. Kyle's expiring. Hey, you know what? Some small markets, you're not going to get a Tyler Hero locked in for four years like you could on his extension. People aren't going to to Indiana or to certain places as free agents, so you could lock him in. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting offseason. I agree with that. For now, if Tyler clears and he's able to play, hey, put him in a uniform. It'll, It'll be a wardrobe upgrade, if nothing else, and then let him go from there. All right. If the Miami Heat go on to win the NBA title, does Pat Riley retire? No, because I don't think Pat Riley is going to retire because go out a winner or doesn't want to go out a loser. I think Pat Riley does this as long as he enjoys it. Pat Riley enjoys it. The one thing I get to see during the season, we're seeing it a little bit now, is it practices in the arena on the practice court or even when he travels on the road, you just see him sitting there with Adam Simon, with Andy Ellisberg. Eric Spolstra always comes over and talks to him before he talks to the press. Pat enjoys it. This is his atmosphere. You know, it's, it's like, I mean, honestly, Big O's, my wife always kids, if we win lotto, are you going to retire? I'm sure you're the same way. Even yeah. if you win lotto, you like what you do. You enjoy yeah. it. 
So right. I don't think a win or a loss is going to impact Pat. I think one day Pat's going to get out of bed and go, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Pat, Pat talked about when he quit coaching. If you remember the scene in Forrest Gump when he's running across the country, back and forth, back and forth, and then he stops. And he just looks around and he goes, I'm finished. That's what Pat Riley said when he got up at those airport tarmacs at four in the morning and realized, I'm done with coaching. I'm not going to be in this tarmac in Detroit waiting for the team bus. And I think he'll determine it, whether it's a championship season, whether it's falling short, whether it's a 15-win season. Pat Riley enjoys it. He enjoys – it's almost like being John Malkovich. He enjoys being Pat Riley. And he's really being Pat Riley when he's being in the NBA. How important – we'll wrap it up with this. Sure. How important was it to win in Denver and to – instill that doubt into yes. Denver who was undefeated at home, who was, you know, praised by everybody out there who was nobody could solve the riddle of the Denver Nuggets and yet Spo again, the greatest out there as I, you know me, I love to praise that guy. That guy is just freaking amazing how he designed the perfect defense to kind of slow them down and give his team a chance to win. Um, and now you, they question their effort. Then they got to tell you that they went to Green's house that was out in the boonies and that yeah. now that they became together a team, which, brother, the whole season is about that, not this moment. So I, I, I think the win, the, the win was, was nice, yes. but the doubt was Yes, they amazing. planted a seed of doubt. You're spot on. Big O, I'm going to go this far, and we'll, check, we'll, we'll fact check me next week. I think the winner of game three wins the series. I think okay. if the Heat can make it two in a row against Denver and all of a sudden Denver realizes, wait, they don't, have, win. To win in, they don't have to win, win in Denver again. We're in trouble. Yeah. By, by contrast, if the Heat give up the home court, Denver goes up, oh, we're back to altitude. This time the Heat aren't arriving two, three, four days early before the game. They're going to have to get used to our place. We'll let them know. So, yeah, I think tonight is kind of weird at 1-1 in a best of seven, but I think tonight's the swing swing game of the series. I think the winner of game three wins the NBA Finals. What do you got going on in the Sun Sentinel leading up to the game? And a really fun story if you have some time. I did a story about how players who get called up on pick and rolls are sort of fresh meat. And what's it like when they're trying to get – Duncan Robinson to switch on them or Kevin Love on them or, or Max Struess on them. And the guys are really honest. They say, hey, we know why they're switching because they don't think I can defend and they're trying to rip me apart and turn me into a human carcass. So I spoke to everyone and I built the story around, if you remember the 2016, I believe it was, NBA Finals, when Kevin Love got caught on that switch with Steph Curry and had to defend him on the decisive final play and Steph missed and he said, look, you get called up on the pick and roll all the time. You have to make a stand. Duncan was really good. I thought when I approached him and said, hey, you're a bad defender. What's it like? And he took me through and he goes, hey, I know what they're trying to do. I know they're going to try to get me on Jamal Murray. And I know that I've got to meet the challenge. And Eric Spolstra said, don't you think we're doing that with Jimmy Butler all the time? Right. I mentioned, if you remember, Peyton Pritchard got called up on Jimmy Butler to a point. I think Peyton, Peyton Pritchard left the building crying when Jimmy tormented him. So I did a story about what it's like to be fresh meat in the NBA and how the players are carnivores. So that's at sunsentinel.com and in your paper tomorrow. And follow him on Twitter at Ira Heat Beat and enjoy the game tonight. Thank you, Ira. We'll catch up next week. Catch you next week in our accurate Pembroke Pines report. Thanks, Big O. Thank you, sir. Ira Winderman with our Acura Pembroke Pines Miami Heat and NBA report there at 15601 Pines Boulevard just off of I-75 and Pines. Go out there, folks. Listen, I've had an Acura in my family now for well over 10 years now. We've had an Acura in our family, whether it's my daughter or my wife or myself driving. Uh, and I tell you because they are incredibly reliable vehicles. So if you're looking to buy or lease, a brand new vehicle, or maybe you want to get a certified pre-owned vehicle, get on down there, tell them that Big O sent you. They'll take care of you, man. Great dealership. And if you own or lease an Acura, Jordan, Mike Chan and Jordan Ferber, they do an awesome job running that service center. They are fantastic people and a great dealership. Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pine. This is the Big O Show.